Guess what? We do have Chicago playing Green Bay this weekend. We do have the Philadelphia Eagles playing the Los Angeles Rams this weekend. We do have Carson Wentz with a fractured, what is it? What is it? Fractured vertebrae in his back. And oh, by the way, not that I'm some kind of back doctor or anything. I mean, after all, my back has been hurt a little bit lately. You know, maybe I need to go see a damn doctor. But I got to tell you something. I'm not so sure about these folks right now. They tell you a disc in your back, you can't, feel, you, you can't necessarily cure it. But I lay on one of those incline or inverted machines, lay upside down for a little while. My back feels just fine. But then again, I ain't a quarterback. Getting whiplash or getting my neck snapped because somebody's blindsided me because my left tackle forgot to block. That would be Carson Wentz. And they're saying he's got a fractured vertebrae, but it doesn't need surgery. It just needs rest. Really? Would any of y'all feel comfortable hearing that? It doesn't need to be, uh, listen, you got a fractured vertebrae in the back, but oh no, it doesn't need to be operated on. It doesn't require surgical repair. It just needs rest. Really? I'm not feeling that. I'm not feeling that at all. So as far as I'm concerned, he's out. Nick Foles will be in. Whether or not that means something for the Eagles, probably not. Their chance was last week against the Dallas Cowboys, and they got robbed. That was a fumble at the beginning of the game by the Cowboys. It should have been the given to the Eagles. That was a touchdown near the end of the day, near the end of the game by Goddard. It should have been a touchdown. They had the ball earlier. Dallas probably would have scored again. But then the Eagles would have got it back, and they would have did their thing. Nevertheless, it is what it is. We got New Orleans and the Rams as the top two teams. We got the Chicago Bears, a third team. My man, Lewis Riddick, who's coming on the show early, later, a little bit later, has predicted the Chicago Bears are going to the Super Bowl because their monsters of the midway defense has returned its resurface, and they're going to wreak havoc throughout the NFC playoffs. Dallas is a team that you got to consider because in all likelihood they're going to win the NFC East. So that's your fourth team. Your fifth team is the Seattle Seahawks. And what they're going to be able to do because they'll probably make it as a fifth seed. And then on the outside looking in, it's the Minnesotas of the world. It's the Carolinas of the world. It's the Philadelphia Eagles of the world. They have an outside shot at that sixth and last seed within the NFC playoff picture. Am I sold? Am I a believer? Hell no. And oh, by the way, since I'm in New York, let me bring up the Giants. You know what? I don't, rec I don't recall being more annoyed by a New York team winning in my life. I mean, you got to be the stupidest people imaginable. So in other words, you stink up the bed. You're not going anywhere. You're on a fast track to nowhere. You're the New York Giants. And suddenly you want to go on a winning streak. Suddenly you want to go on a winning streak. When losing helps position you for a higher draft pick that you need and require to help this team in the future, now you're going to win. But when you needed to win, we couldn't buy one. Couldn't buy one. Now we want to have all of this chitter chattering going on. Oh, Saquon Barkley's the best. Well, duh. That's why he was drafted number two overall. He's got tree trunks for legs. He's got good body mass on him. He ain't that tall, so lower center of gravity definitely works in his favor. He can juke you better than anybody that I've seen in recent memory. Comparable to the Barry Sanders of the world. Saquon Barkley's special. Quarterback's not special. Offensive line is not special. Odell Beckham Jr. is out, so guess what? The receivers ain't that damn special. Sterling Shepard, he's good, but come on now. So I'm just saying, what's wrong with losing? Listen, I am not an advocate of tanking, of throwing games. But there are exceptions to every rule in every moment. And this season would require that. I think it would have qualified as an exception. The New York Giants should have been losing every chance they get. They should have put a bunch of Pop Warner players up in there if they had to. Anything to avoid winning the damn football game. So you can make sure. And guess why I say that? Because, ladies and gentlemen, if you look at this kid, Quinn Nelson, out of Notre Dame, that got picked up sixth overall by Indianapolis, if I remember correctly, fifth or sixth, I think it was sixth, look at what this man has done to buffer Indy's offensive line. Look at how well 
They have been playing because of it. Look at how well Andrew Luck has been protected. And look at the results that the Indianapolis Colts have reaped from it. So guess what? You don't have to get a star quarterback with a top two, top three, top five pick. If you position yourself to get a top five pick in the NFL draft, maybe you too can find that next elite offensive lineman. And as a result, that will buffer your running game. It might help your quarterback look better, which might help Odell Beckham Jr. look better. It's a chain reaction. But that is not what the New York Giants have elected to do, which makes me look at them and say, damn, here you go again. 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. You are listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio, live from the rooftop, Pier 17, South Street, Seaport, Winterland. Got an ice skate ring up in here. I got a little something personal to get into, but that'll be one of my after my next break. Right now, I got the great Lewis Riddick, our NFL analyst extraordinaire, on the line with yours truly, who just uh, over the last few weeks, man, he's been getting a little bit bold with me. He's been getting a little bit bold. All right, I don't understand it. I don't understand, but it's all right. What's up, Lewis? How you doing, man? No, man, you know, you and I, just, we just come straight forward. We just talk ball. That's that, all. You, you know, know how it, it is. That ain't nothing but love for you, my brother. You know that. But I do need you to explain yourself. Before I get into <laughs> the charges, before I get into the charges, and uh, you know what? a matter of fact, I'll let you explain yourself about your Chicago Bears in a minute. Yeah. For now, for now, yeah. talk, to, for now talk to me about what you saw last night. How did the Chargers win this game? Yeah, you know, they did – they did a lot of old-fashioned things, meaning they remain, first and foremost, they remain patient and poised, which a lot of people go, yeah, 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 but just get to what they, no, they remain patient, they remain poised, they didn't get outside of what their game plan was, which was to try and stay balanced, make sure that the Chiefs couldn't just tee off on them rushing the passer, because I'll tell you what, when the Chiefs could tee off on them rushing the passer, they were knocking Phillip around now. D and Justin were coming, Chris Jones was coming, those guys were coming after him. So they remained patient. Even when they were down 14 in the fourth, they, were, they still remained true to who they are. That's, first, that's number one. Number two, in the second half, they really started to make Patrick Mahomes uncomfortable from a defensive standpoint. The Chiefs were also committing a lot of penalties. They, were, they weren't able to like string together consistency on the offensive side of the ball to where they could eat up more clock and they could limit some of Phillips' chances at bringing his team back. That's another problem. What else leads to that? Damian Williams in the running game wasn't a big enough part of the game in, the, in that second half in those crucial time-killing moments. And that's something that Andy's been criticized for before. I'm sure it's something people will start criticizing him for again, even though he has what everybody knows is a – superstar, once-in-a-lifetime quarterback, you still can't put that much pressure on him to win football games all the time by himself. Are you and then the, lastly, when no, Phillip go, go got hot, yep. when he got hot, you couldn't slow him down because the secondary just doesn't have the horses to deal with the kind of wide receivers they were dealing with last night. I don't care if Keenan Allen's there or not. Mike Williams is a stud, and you'll be hearing about him for a long time from now on. Are you of the mindset that it's time to start looking at the Los Angeles Chargers uh, as a legitimate contender for the Super Bowl? Do you think that it, they could come out of the AFC? Yeah, I, I think I think some people have really have been floating their name out there as a possibility anyway, first and foremost, because Anthony Lynn's a tremendous coach. That coach is a very hard-nosed, old-school, uh, tough brand of football within the context of the modern game. And his teams play that way. They never quit. They never give up. And they're talented. They have a Hall of Fame caliber quarterback. When they're healthy on offense, they have one of the best running backs in the league. And they have one of the best wide receivers in the league, Keenan Allen. So, and then on the defensive side, they can rush the passer, and they've got an absolute eraser at safety in Derwin James. So they've got all the components that would lead you to believe this is a team that can do damage once they get into the playoffs because they have people who are high-level people in critical positions and great coaching. So, yeah, they're going to be there, and that's why their record is what it is. Louis Riddick right here with Stephen A., ESPN Radio, ESPN News. Let's get to this point. You went on Waddy and Silver's show uh, in um, Chicago the other day, uh -huh. and you said that the Chicago Bears, not the New Orleans Saints, not the Los Angeles Rams with your boy Aaron Donald, you uh -huh. said the Chicago Bears are coming out of the NFC and will represent the NFC in Super Bowl 53 in Atlanta. Is that true, Louis Riddick? And if so, that's why? True. That is true. That is what I said, and I'll tell you why. I don't even really need to talk about their defense. 
their defense is going to travel where, whether it's the Superdome, the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum, or whether it's at Soldier Field. That, right. that defense is going to be there. Okay, they just are. And Vic Fangio is one of the best defensive coordinators of my time in the NFL. He's just he's just one of the best, and he gets it. Just watch him play. You'll see what I mean. On the offensive side, I believe coaching is going to make the difference in terms of Matt being able to make sure that as we continue to wind through the rest of this season and on into the postseason, that Mitch Trubisky does, is not the reason that they lose games. He doesn't need to be the reason that they win. He doesn't have to have, need, him, need him to throw for 400 yards and three touchdowns. He doesn't need him to be Patrick Mahomes. He just needs him to be not what he was the other night, which was a turnover machine and an inaccuracy machine. He can't be that. And he showed that he can he can play the game at a high level, at a very high level. When did Mitchell Trubisky show you that? Oh, no, 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 no. When okay, did that happen? When, when did he okay, show you that? Tampa, Tampa, okay, look, it was obviously not against a very good defense. But let's just say the Tampa Bay game this past oh, year. Oh, Lord. Okay, but I'm, I'm just talking about where the ball was being put. Okay. From an accuracy standpoint. Where it was being put, how it was being thrown. I know everyone's saying, well, that's a bit of a bad defense. There's a lot, a lot of open throwing windows, etc., etc." Okay. In some instances, there was that. In other instances, I've seen... Mitchell throw the ball with accuracy into less than ideal situations where he had to throw a guy open. He can do that. Now, can can Matt get him to smooth out his performance enough so to where it's not a detriment? I believe he can. I think Matt Nagy's a superstar, a bona fide superstar coach. And on top of it, it's not like this offense doesn't have tremendous speed and versatility and a pretty damn good offensive line. Okay, that neutralized my boy that you referenced a few minutes ago on Aaron Donald. They had Aaron had his worst game of the year statistically and theoretically against the against the Bears. And Aaron's from Pittsburgh. Okay, he ain't worried about the cold. It wasn't the cold that slowed Aaron down. It, it was what it, they it, were doing it, to him. It could have been his own offense that had, that, 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 that 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 pretty much induced an allergic reaction. They stuck up the <laughs> joint so much that the defense was on the field entirely too often, and they would prefer. And as a result, I mean, Jerry Goff did throw four interceptions that day. Aaron's a cyborg. He don't get tired. He's not a man. That's not a man. That's not a normal man. Mm. All right. My my point though is this: I think look, Mitchell was also coming off of an injury to his throwing shoulder in the AC, AC joint. We don't know how sore it was. We don't know how much it was altering his, what he thought needed to be maybe more velocity put on the ball, whether it was altering his arm angle, altering his follow through. We don't know. Okay. Those are all things that, that are X factors that we don't have really an answer for. And I'm betting on the fact that I've seen enough of him from this year to say that he doesn't, he won't be that turnover machine. He won't cost them games. He doesn't have to be the person who wins them games and they will play a brand of football that once January rolls around, everybody's going to be reminded of that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You got to play all three phases to win in the NFL, in, in the playoffs. You can't just throw the ball all over the yard and have everybody getting excited because their fantasy football teams are blowing up. You have to actually defend. You actually, you actually have to pin people back deep in their own territory with good punting and good, good punt coverage and good kickoff coverage. And you have to return the ball with good efficiency and not turn it over in terms of muff punts and what have you. Oh, yeah, you have to play like that to get to the Super well, Bowl. They're going to play that way, Stephen A. Eh? Louis, Louis Riddick, before I let you get on out of here, could you tell me – your thoughts real quick about what's going to happen in this Sunday's encounter when New England visits Pittsburgh for the third consecutive Ooh. year. Pittsburgh yeah, season I, is I, on the I, line. I'm, Pittsburgh season is on the line. They can't right. lose this game. Yeah, you're right. And their backs are against the wall, and I have a lot of respect for that football team and that organization. I also have the ultimate respect for Bill Belichick and Tom Brady in the Patriot way. And the Patriot way has been to absolutely dismantle the Pittsburgh Steelers in, this, in, the, in their vaunted defense. I don't. I, I use that term loosely, obviously, because I'm thinking about the steel curtain. But there, the Patriot way has been to attack this team down the middle between the numbers at the linebacker level with heavy doses of Gronk and Edelman and heavy doses of James James White on very timely screens, play actions, rub routes, pick routes, option routes, the kind that you just sit there and you go, man, first down, first down, first down. They can't stop them. First down because of the way Pittsburgh likes to play a basically very vanilla bend but don't break type of defense. And I think it's going to be business as usual. That's my pick. So I'm going Patriots. Louis Riddick, appreciate you, man. I'll be talking to you next week, man. Thanks a lot. Enjoy this weekend.
You got it, Stephen A. Thanks. All right. The one and only Louis Riddick right here. Stephen with Stephen A. ESPN Radio, ESPN News, 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. Uh, by the way, you know Christmas is right around the corner when 100flowers.com releases their best-selling holiday arrangement, the Holiday Flower Tree. To order now and get 20% off, go to 100flowers.com slash ESPN. And, fellas, particularly some of you young whippersnappers I see out here looking at me right now, you know when 100 Flowers gives you a deal, you better capitalize on that, right, because your woman's listening. And if she's listening, and she, I, she ain't going to say anything to you now. She's not going to sit up there and say, honey, I want some flowers. Could you give me some flowers? Could you please give me some flowers? It would really mean a lot to me if you gave me some flowers. She ain't going to do that. She's just going to look at you up and down like you short. Like, I know this boy, better not, he better not, better not pass on this deal, better not fail to give me some flowers. That's going to tell me everything I know, I need to know about him. And I'm saying it to you on a Friday, knowing that you're probably off Saturday and Sunday. And you know how important your evenings are. So I, it would behoove you to listen to me. Get the woman some flowers. Take advantage of the 20% off. Or else you can't blame the love doctor. That's all I'm saying. The Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Guests on the Stephen A. Smith Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil performance line. And you can always get in touch with the show through the 1-800-Flowers Twitter feed. Welcome back to the Stephen A. Smith Show. Coming at you live from above the Heineken River Deck at Pier 17, South Street Seaport, Winterland. Pier 17, Winterland. Plus, put a smile on everybody's face this holiday with great gifts from Amazon. With low prices and fast free delivery with Prime for everything you need this holiday. Visit Amazon. Ladies and gentlemen, let me get to a point real quick. I messed up big time yesterday. You young whippersnappers out there, I need you to listen to this because you can take notes here. Breath smelling like Similac wet behind the ears. Take notes. I messed up yesterday. I was, I'm all over social media and beyond. Everybody talking about how I messed up because I was on the air talking about the Kansas City Chiefs Chargers preview and I made about four different mistakes. It's true. Because... My silly dumb self was literally, while folks was in my ear, looking at a tape of last year's game between the Chiefs and the Chargers in Kansas City and started talking because the damn announcer, I was watching it, and I lost my train of thought real quick before I got it back. It happens. Shouldn't have happened, but it happens. Mistakes happen, ladies and gentlemen. But I love how people try to use this as an opportunity to, to, to come at me as if I, I, uh, suddenly I don't know my football, even though I was debating the same damn subject the first three days of the week prior to yesterday. And on, not only that, I talk about football every day. And on top of all of that, I talk about it on a two-hour radio show after I talk about it on television. It just goes to show when you're popular, when you're successful, sometimes people are going to come at you. And to you young whippersnappers out there, guess what? You got to take it. Because the fact of the matter is this, and it's very, very simple. When athletes and people in the world of sports make mistakes, we are all over them. You don't get to be all over people, and then when it's your turn, run like a little punk. And hide. And act like the mistake didn't happen. Oh, no. They don't get to do it. Since we cover them and we chronicle those mistakes, we got to own up to it when we do. It's just that simple. And oh, by the way, there's a good thing that comes with it. When you acknowledge it, face it, and then move on from it, where the critic's going in. So don't run or hide from your mistakes or whatever. Own it and move on. And you know what even, what's even better about it? When you're me, you can be even worse. You can be cynical about it, because you know what I tell those critics? Did you spell my name right? It's with a P-H, not a V. It's Stephen with a P-H. Did you just, just spell my name right? And move.